Gonna lie when you know he a devil. He unlock the door on a whole other level. He ready for war when he chopping that metal. We know what he doing. He come from the ghetto. Them bricks he be moving, the hips he be doing, and chicks he be screwing. A proud of melt you. He trapping his music, he's trapping. He use it the only way you can live if he choose it. Oh, so I'ma go ahead and bet ya. He gon' be dead when they catch ya. Don't mess with that man in that red and blue band. Dead or alive, he arrest ya. He cut like a knife in against you. Every day he don't tell him what he into. He pimping and selling and cripping and gelling. He do everything all on the menu. After all of the shit that he been through, he ain't got no break, so he continue dealing with love and hate. You live in the bed you make. C C C. God don't care what you can't do. See so y'all can kill what you can't rule. When he get the car, so gonna fall. Now look where the devil just sent you. The devil got all of you, hey. 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 They killing my niggas, hey, hey. They blowing my niggas away. They pillin', they dropping, they leaning, they chopping, they smoking and popping, and hey. The devil got all of you, 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 hey. They killing my niggas, they day. They blowing my niggas away. They pillin' and dropping and leaning and chopping and smoking and popping and hey. Everybody, Nash Baker, Mason Knight, whatever you want to call me, and you are watching a million hits for the Black History Roger, Month of February 2016. So, I want to get into some issues that are national, breaking news now, um, dealing with uh, some issues concerning Black Lives Matter. And um, Ezel Ford and a lot of other movements as well as uh, the Black Panthers and the New Black Riders. Well, obviously there is an internet uh, rumor in which I had to make sure that it was true that Alex Jones and Mr. Farrakhan did an interview. Uh, recently at the headquarters of the Nation of Islam and um, what was said was very very disturbing um, and very frightful is that uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan and this was a quote from Alex Jones um, in which there was a two-hour interview on the Alex Jones show is that Mr. Louis Farrakhan quoted and said that he was about to be arrested any day now. Um, it has been checked out. It's not a rumor at this point. So it's obvious that in the history of the past, whenever there's a leader that uh, is bought down or threatened in the black community, there's usually an uprising or some sort of uh, riot or so on and so forth. So um, his words were that it could cause a race war. 
and it's very concerning to me as a black man and a black reporter that a lot of the stories we have been covering dealing with Ezel Ford and you know Jason Smith and a slew of other cop related shootings that it could possibly cause civilians and police officers to clash you know even though it's in Chicago you could sort of see the pattern all over in the darkest hours we ate. Lord forgive me for my sins when Armageddon is for good or evil wins. And I'm leaving today to Phoenix, Arizona, was to interview Louis Farrakhan at Elijah Muhammad's original home and where Louis Farrakhan stays much of the time. And I came here to interview him on ways to not have extreme rhetoric on the government side, the local side, the police side, the black Muslim side, the patriot side, whatever the case is. And it was a much better interview than I even thought, two hours long. Uh, we're going to be putting it out in the next few weeks. They want to put it out. I was going to take a month to put it out and really kind of make it a documentary, but they want to put it out quicker. So we're going to race as fast as we can to put this out. It's going to be a huge interview. Headlines are going to be all over the country about this. Uh, I can tell you that Louis Farrakhan said point blank at dinner last night. Very, very gracious. I was dinner with him for three hours with Rob Dew and Josh Owens, and then two hours, two hours and ten minutes interviewing him before that that there is a grand jury that is open to indict him. He's told they're coming to arrest him very soon. Um, and that he knows they're trying to cause a race war and a civil war in America. And the things he said have been taken out of context when he said, did the police shoot us in the back, we go out and get them. He said he meant the people that do it specifically, but he said he understands that he said that in anger and that he agrees that all of God's children, all the, all the tribes of Israel, need to come together. Right. These young people are looking for fearless leadership. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. That's why we're here. But leadership that cannot be bought. Yeah. Leadership that is willing to sacrifice its life yes. Yes. to see a better future. Children. That's why I'm here, sir. You know, and then with the recent uh, takedown of the Freedom Fighters in Oregon, um, doing their protest, it ended with uh, gunfire and the arrest of the Oregon leader of the Freedom Fighter group. But we'll definitely be paying attention to this because this can mean that the violence in the streets, you know, have to get looked at you know and, and especially the black on black violence because now you might find yourself you know on the other side of the fence so I want to get into a homicide that occurred on uh, somewhere around uh, the Avalon area on 84th and Avalon at between 83rd and 84th Street where four people were in front of a liquor store and gunned down. Um, unknown why it happened, but apparently a few gunmen jumped out of a SUV and began firing multiple rounds of an AK-47 rapid fire at four people standing in front of the store, in which a male and a female were fatally struck and two others uh, suffered life, non-life-threatening injuries. Um, this concerns me because the amount of firepower that was used, you know, kind of made all the law enforcement and the people in that community seem very frightened. And uh, when I got there, one person said it sounded like it was a, a, a war going on from Beirut or Afghanistan or something, and uh, they immediately hit the floor, and I could just imagine hearing 
a 30 round clip with rapid fire going off is not a way to start your day off anywhere you go with another homicide shortly the next day on 83rd in Maine uh, there was a shooting of a 20 or I, I believe 19 to 20 year old African American male um, in which apparently the, the gunfire started on 83rd Street ended up in a apartment complex and you know some of the church members came out and you know they were giving their opinions on the young man who was killed and, and they were very baffled on the violent way he died and they said that he was actually a part of a choir at their church and spoke highly of the young man and um, again we're losing the youth you know and as young as 19 to 20 and majority of these shootings that I'm covering there just it seems like life at this point is live very recklessly when you're dealing and you're talking to the youth they don't look at the value of it right now because apparently you know growing up without mothers and fathers is definitely a a backflash um definitely want to ask the area and the community to think about you know the political issues that we have to face as black people coming up and it's definitely changing the demographics in our area are, are slowly leaving from black to hispanic and are caucasian in some cases you know and jobs are scarce at this point i mean going to jail not getting an attorney or not having the resources or the money to get an attorney to get out of some of these cases you know you're taking a serious chance on going out and getting caught for doing a drive-by shooting or, or just committing a 211 you know no i'm making a plea to our government or to whatever group that can help financially that we do need the help and the specifically in the South LA area. Times are changing and where times are changing we're definitely on the front lines and it's 2016 and I'm Nash Baker, Mason Knight, whatever you want to call me. And you're watching A Million Nights. Forgive me for my